Lucinda Crawford, host of the HealthMattersShow.com. Today our topic is more medicines but fewer answers, or staying healthy in spite of drugs, doctors, and the crumbling medical profession. Recently in the June 5, 2008 edition of the New York Times, there was an article about whether arthritis drugs cause cancer. That got me to thinking. Now, I don't know if you're like me, but I don't want to put things into my body that have adverse side effects, much less a drug to fix one problem but ends up causing me cancer. If you break down the pharmaceutical industry drug picture into smaller and smaller parts, you find that there are four main components that drive this entire industry. Number one, people wanting to get cured of what ails them. They want pills or something to fix what's wrong with them. They go to their general practice doctor and ask for help. Number two, the doctor seeing those patients who have immediate or chronic illness needs, like fibromyalgia or chronic fatigue syndrome, feel it's their responsibility to do something about the person's health dilemma. So they rip out their prescription pad and start writing. Folks, it seems to make no difference if you're on one drug or 15, because the medical industry's new motto is, we always have something to fix you right up. Yuck. Number three, pharmaceutical companies manufacturing all kinds of drug products to fight more and more conditions, and in the process creating more and more potential side effects that the consumer must figure out how to overcome. Doc, did you say there's a drug? for that symptom too. Number four, drug reps, also known as the representatives working for the big drug company conglomerates. They hawk their drug products to doctors who are constantly barraged with these informational sales pitches. How the newest and greatest drug is the one product that they should recommend above all others, including the generic drugs, many of which still work perfectly fine. Since the generics no longer have patents on them, they cost a whole lot less than the newer recommended ones. We won't speak categorically that physicians are being compensated more for prescribing certain drugs or referring to specific medical facilities, but I've heard that's often the case. Unfortunately, the bottom line to reason number four that's driving this industry is money and profits. Yes, if you consider just a small look at our very broken system, you realize that we patients have poor chances of staying healthy and not having to take handfuls of drugs. Due to the pressures and pulls, our physicians don't have adequate time for continued education, and I don't count a drug rep's 15 minutes of high-stress sales presentation as a good authoritative source of the latest and greatest, do you? Folks, physicians' incomes may have been smashed to pieces unless they comply with the doctor-patient seven-minute turnstile in their offices, which seems to be mandated by the controlling hospitals and insurance companies. Being a physician is no longer the lucrative, satisfying, or rewarding career that it used to be. Many physicians are severely limited and stretched to their outermost limits. They're overworked, overstressed, and they are losing interest in their profession. Many even retire early if they can make it that far without losing their own health. Do you remember when was the last time your personal doctor sat down and talked with you for 20, 30, or 40 minutes? Talked to you until the issue you came in for was thoroughly resolved? And I'm speaking here about your general practice doctor, not a specialist. If the truth be told, you probably cannot remember such an incident because it either was too long ago or you didn't get to see your doctor at all because you were forced to visit a physician's assistant or nurse practitioner. This can be caused when the doctor is forced to take on so many patients in his practice to make it profitable that he has to dole out your care to other associates. Now I'm not saying that physician's assistants or nurse practitioners aren't good. Many are extremely qualified and are very good listeners. But if you came in the door to see your doctor, they should not be your only alternative because he or she is too busy. Well, let's wrap this up by saying that you may want to be careful about the number of drugs that you take and maybe which ones. Please don't auto automatically ask for more drugs every time you go to the doctor. Many people find they can logically do without them or choose a more natural healing route. 
and then they can achieve the same or even better results. They're simply better off taking fewer drugs. Investigate this and study this issue for yourself. It's vital and very critical to your health and wellness. I want to thank you. This is Cindy Crawford, host of the Health Matters Show, which supplies great information and offers you broadcasts about how to get well from fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome. Visit us at www.healthmattersplural.com. Come by to see us soon.